Hey. Okay. So uh, today we are starting to get this out. I'm going to get my pen. And here we go. So um, what we're working on today is the next section of Discovery Education, Evidence for Plate Tectonics. Um, this is going to build on the continental drift hypothesis. So uh, in the last section, we learned about Alfred Wegener and the things that he used to kind of uh, come up with the continental drift hypothesis and why ultimately um, nobody really believed that. And, and the reason was he didn't really explain how the continents were moving. He only showed the evidence that they were moving um, but couldn't really tell people why or how. Um, as we got smarter and smarter and more technologically advanced, we got more and more evidence for the, the continents moving around the earth and that that actually was happening. Um, and ultimately we were able to explain it. And so instead of just using the continental drift hypothesis, um, which is kind of a bad name, it, the continents are not drifting. Um, and there's more things at play than just the continents themselves. Um, we came up with a better name and a better theory called the plate tectonics theory. And so starting off right here, um, this is a sign for you. This is the reading we have today for the evidence of plate tectonics. Um, starting off right here, we are going to be able to see some of the things that, that led up to this better theory that's going on. So um, the first thing that, that takes us into the next realm is learning from the mid-ocean ridges. Um, and this kind of brings us back to a little bit of, of wartime history here. Um, so back when, back in World War II, we're sending a lot of boats um, over from the United States over to Europe. And as they're making that trip, um, boats, especially if, if you're going over areas that you're not really familiar with, um, boats take depth readings. You want to know how deep the water is that you're traveling in because um, you don't want to run into something unexpected. And so you have the United States over here. Let's just say this is the U.S. And then over here you have Europe, the EU. And we're sending warships back and forth from the United States to Europe. Um, and as they're going across the ocean, this is the ocean. As they're going across the ocean, they're taking depth readings. They want to see what kind of science they can do. Um, we've outfitted our, our uh, military ships with a lot of technology. Even back in World War II, it's not as technologically advanced as they are now. But they do have um, radar and sonar and different things on them. And so as these ships are going across uh, the ocean, they're taking depth readings. Um, and so they're finding out how deep the ocean is. And one of the things that... that some people discovered as they went back and forth is always in the middle where your ocean is super deep and we just expect it to be super deep and flat. Always in the middle, they would find some sort of mountain range. Um, they didn't really know what this was, but they knew in the middle here, instead of it just being flat all the way across, uh, you would have this mountain range. And it didn't really matter where you were crossing from the U.S. to Europe. Um, they always found that, that underwater mountain range right in the middle of the ocean. So it didn't matter if they went up north. Let me make sure I got this set up right. Didn't matter if they went up north and came from up near Canada over here to northern Europe. It didn't matter if they came south and came down from near Florida over towards the, the, the northern tip of Africa and, and Spain. Um, it didn't really matter how far north or south they went. They always passed this mountain range. Um, and so this was the discovery of mid-ocean ridges. Um, and mid-ocean ridges play an important part in the theory of plate tectonics and, and our understanding of it now. And so learning ab about mid-ocean ridges was kind of a really big deal. So as you read through this, they talk about mid-ocean ridges and what's happening at the mid-ocean ridges. And essentially what we noticed is that things are separating. 
um, we, we have these two pieces of the Earth's crust that are moving further apart. How do we know about this? One of the things that lets us know that they're moving further apart is the magnetic field. Um, as rocks cool, they have uh, minerals in them that can be magnetic, like iron um, or, or magnetite. And these minerals will align to the magnetic field. And so as we started to look at these rocks, we would see these alternating stripes of regular polarity and reverse polarity. So this is an example of that. Um, you can see the regular polarity that we have here in the middle. This is where the North Pole is positive, the South Pole is negative. Um, that's the polarity that we have right now. This is why our compasses work the way that they do. Um, but what we saw as we went across the Mid-Ocean Ridge from continent to continent is that it switches back and forth. Um, and so while these rocks in the middle and, and every other stripe would show that the North Pole was up at the North Pole, um, the magnetic North Pole was up at the uh, rotational North Pole, every other stripe would flip and the magnetic North Pole would be down at the South Pole, the South Rotational Pole. Um, and that showed us that the magnetic poles were flipping, um, that they were doing it fairly often, and that the seafloor was somehow catching that. It, it was uh, recording this almost like a, a piece of scientific equipment that's just left on to record temperatures. It's going to record it all the time. Um, this, this ocean floor is recording these flips. It's seeing the magnetic pole flip, and it's tracking it in the rocks and capturing it, uh, and it's being preserved. And so as we started to look more and more at this, we, we understood this kind of whole cycle that's going on where the, the plate is splitting apart. Both sides are moving away from each other, and we can see that also. Um, both sides are moving away from each other. You have magma coming up from the outer core of the inner core to fill in that slot. And then as the magma cools, the magnetic minerals are being aligned to the North Pole, pole or South Pole, um, and that flips every so often. And so if we go back to the reading. Well, actually, the reading is back one page here. They kind of go through this process of discovery. Um, they talk about the mid-ocean ridges. They talk about the, the flow of liquid up into the inner core and outer core that's filling that crack as the two plates start to move apart. They talk about the magnetic poles wandering and flipping back and forth from the North Pole to the South Pole as far as the positive is concerned. Um, and that we start to see these reversals that have happened on average um, every, every million years or so, maybe a couple million years, maybe less than a million year. Uh, it, it depends. But on average, it's occurring about once every one million years. Um, oh wait, what does it say? Four or five magnetic pole reversals have occurred every one million years. Uh, and so they're, they're not an uncommon thing, and we're seeing this play out in the rock record. And so what we have to do is start to figure out why. Um, what does this mean? It has to mean something, so what does this mean? Um, and this kind of takes us... So the next step, which is understanding that the ocean is, is spreading apart. Um, those two plates, like we saw in the image there, those two plates or those two parts of the ocean floor are moving away from each other. Um, and the more we watch it, the more they move away from each other. And so if we come back to my little map here, what they discovered is that the United States and Europe are getting further and further apart um, every single year. They're spreading more and more and more. And this part of the ocean is moving to the left. This part of the ocean is moving to the right. Um, and that mountain range corresponds to the splitting point um, where, where they're cracking open and each side is moving to the left and each side is moving to the right. We have this mountain range that's right in the center. Um, and so this leads us to the idea of seafloor spreading. Well, if the seafloor is spreading, and we're getting this crack in the Earth's crust, um, how come we don't have a giant, like, canyon, like a giant Grand Canyon down in the middle of the ocean? Um, if they were spreading apart, we'd expect to see a canyon and not a mountain range. A mountain range doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what could be causing this mountain range? Well, the answer is what's, what's underneath 
the crust of the earth. Um, we saw this in the first section of this chapter. Um, what's underneath the crust of the earth is magma, um, or, or what's really, really close to magma in temperature. Uh, this is the mantle. And so this, this semi-molten material that's, that's inside the earth and it's really, really hot, acts as a fluid um, or can move around like a fluid. It has convection cells. Um, this is the, the material that's coming up to fill in. So instead of a crack um, just kind of getting wider and wider in the earth and us having this big crack in, in the crust of the earth, um, what we're actually getting is this magma is coming up to fill that crack. Um, and as it fills the crack, it's, it's producing tiny volcanoes, not really big volcanoes. They're not explosive. Um, but these volcanoes are creating this, this mid-ocean ridge that's kind of filling in the crack that's happening because we have this spreading. Um, and so each of these is kind of unveiling a new part of plate tectonics that we didn't really fully understand before. So going back to the reading... They talk about the, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong one. So going back to the reading, they talk about the spreading of the seafloor. So seafloor spreading, um, how those two parts of the ocean are splitting apart, which forms your mid-ocean ridge. Um, right in the middle of the ridge, they have this little valley. That's our big valley that we would expect to happen if everything were ripping apart but it's much, much smaller. And it's only at the top of that mountain range. Um, this is exactly where everything is splitting apart. And so now that we knew to look for this mid ocean ridge, um, we started to look everywhere in the oceans to see how many we can find. And almost every single ocean has a mid ocean ridge. Um, the Atlantic has one that's right in the middle here. So you can see the United States, you can see Europe, uh, Africa right here. And right in the middle of the Atlantic, all the way from almost the North Pole to almost down to the South Pole, we have this ridge where everything is splitting apart and moving further and further away. Um, there's also one in the Indian Ocean. There's one not in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but there is one in the Pacific Ocean. Um, they're everywhere. Everywhere we look, we find these ridges. And another thing that we noticed is the age of the ocean plates. So we took rock samples from the bottom of the ocean. And what we found was that the oldest rock was on the edges. And the youngest rock was here in the center. And so as you went from the center all the way out to the edges, the rock would just get older and older and older. Um, and the left side matched the right side. It was almost like a, a mirror image. And so you start young and you go older, 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 all the way to the end of the ocean where you get to the continent. And then same thing on the right side, you start young, get older, 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 all the, all the way to get to the edge of the continent. So that's a very important discovery. And we can see that here in the map. Um, your youngest stuff is red. That's going to be right along these mid-ocean ridges. And then it's just going to get older and older and older until you get all the way right up next to the continents. It's going to have your purple uh, and maybe a little bit of pink, not a lot of pink on the map. Um, what this tells us is two things. Uh, we have different age rocks in the ocean, and, and we have these spreading centers that are creating new rock. Because the newest rock that's like less than uh, 10 million years old, which is really, really young, is right in the center of the ocean, right along this mountain range. The mountain range is made of only young rocks. Um, and that the rest of the ocean just gets older and older and older. And so this also needs an explanation. Why is this happening? And another question is, why do we not have any really old rocks um, in the ocean? The oldest rocks that we can find in the ocean are a little bit over 200 million years old. Um, and so, where the continents are all billions of years old. We can find rocks on the continents that are easily 2 billion, 3 billion years old on every single continent. Um, why is the ocean rock not any older than like a quarter of a billion years old? 
um, you know, 250 million years is, is about as old as we get. So why are the oceans much younger than the continents? That needs another explanation. So as we go to the next page, we will see that we start to see some more evidence for what's going on here. So for page two, they look at uh, Alfred Wegener's evidence. Um, and we already talked about this last time, but he noticed that the landforms were similar, that you could see um, the shape of South America fit right in with Africa. Um, he noticed that the fossils were similar. And, and these are fossils that um, wouldn't have had a way to cross over an entire ocean and be found in another uh, continent as their position today. Um, you're talking about plants, you're talking about uh, land walking animals that don't have the ability to swim far distances or uh, freshwater fish that, that can't swim across an entire ocean. How did they get from the United States to Africa or for Africa to South America? Um, there's not a real good explanation for that if the, if the continents are exactly where they've always been. Uh, glacial deposits also, you can see glacial deposits in India um, in, in the middle part of Africa, um, which doesn't make any sense. Those are very, very hot places. So they kind of go through Wegener's uh, evidence as, as he had it in the continental drift hypothesis. Um, but when we get to plate tectonics, we start to get some new evidence. Um, the seafloor spreading and the ages of the seafloor and the mid-ocean ridge are just one part of that. Um, there's also some more evidence that they find. And so as we start to get GPS systems in, um, GPS is very, very accurate. You can know by just the cheap little GPS that you have on your phone. Um, you can know like down to just a couple feet where you're at. Um, and if you, if you get expensive GPS, they can get down to like the centimeter range or, or maybe, I don't know about millimeters, but, uh, you can easily get down to the centimeter range. And so as we got better and better GPS units, we could actually see the plates moving. Um, you put in a permanent GPS station and you can see from space how they move year by year by year. It's, it's a small amount, just a, a couple centimeters, um, but we can see them actually move through there. And then finally, um, this last page talks about what Alfred Wegener and the continental drift hypothesis did not have. Um, which was why, why and how are these plates moving? Um, and so as we studied more and more uh, the mid-ocean ridges, the plates, the mantle, um, the crust, and the core, uh, what we found was the mantle has convection. Um, there are things moving around inside the earth, large uh, bodies of melted rock or close to melted rock um, that are going to rise to the top as they get hot, and then when they cool down up near the top, they're going to sink down to the bottom. And so you get this convection that's happening. Um, and what we believe right now, and this still, you know, we can't see exactly what's happening inside the earth. So there's still a little bit to prove. Um, but what we believe is happening is this convection is, is driving the plate motion. It's, it's kind of pushing it around as this happens. Along with that, we have two other parts of plate motion that, that help, uh, help kind of solve this. So let me actually show you here. I'm going to draw a little bit of a, a, a different kind of idea. So we have our earth. It's a wonderful earth. Look at that nice curve. Um, and what we're going to have here is, is convection. So we have the core. The core is very hot. Um, it's got a lot of heat, a lot of pressure built up. And so this part of the mantle, we'll say this is the crust. Got a nice thin part of crust here. This part of the mantle is going to have uh, two different temperatures in a way. You're going to have the stuff that's really, really hot down here at the bottom. And you're going to have stuff that's, that's much colder up here at the top because it's, it's close to the surface. Uh, it's not that hot up here at the surface where we live or we wouldn't be able to live here. Um, and so you've got lots of water, you have air in the atmosphere and all these things are gonna cool your rock down, uh, which is why we can walk outside with bare feet and it's not like molten lava on the surface of the earth. 
So when things heat up down here at the core, they're going to rise. Hot things rise because they become less dense. Um, and then once they come up here to the top and they start to cool down near the surface, they're going to start to sink again. And so you have these uh, convection cells with hot things rising and cold things sinking. Uh, let's put another one in over here. We're going to have a convection cell, hot things rising, cold things sinking. And the key here is at the top, what's happening? This convection cell is going to the right. This convection cell is going to the left. And so the plates are also going to want to go to the left and to the right. And they're going to start to move apart from each other based on what's happening in these convection cells. And so the crust here in the middle is going to start to split apart. Um, and, and what's going to be available to fill this crack in the Earth's crust now? Magma. Magma from the mantle. Um, and so this molten material, this melted rock, is going to come up into this crack, and it's going to fill the crack, and it's going to create your mid-ocean ridge. So mid-ocean ridge. And so now we're going to have two different things. If I'm creating new crust right here in the middle, I've got to be destroying crust somewhere else. Um, and so for every area of mid-ocean ridge where we have new crust being created, we can also find another area where the crust is being pushed down underneath another crust. Uh, this is called a subduction zone. And this is where plate is being subducted or pushed down. And once it goes down here into the mantle and starts to get hotter and hotter and hotter, what's it going to do? It's going to melt. And so it's going to start to melt down. And so every place we have crust being created, we have another place where crust is being destroyed. Um, that's part of the theory of plate tectonics is if you have anything being created and not being destroyed, your earth is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, or on the other hand, if you're destroying more stuff than you're creating, the earth is going to shrink and get smaller. We don't see that happening. Um, the earth is staying the exact same size. And so what's happening is for every bit of plate we have created, we have more destroyed. And this is where the other mechanism comes in that helps to move the continents. Let's say this is a continent. Uh, this is the U.S. And gravity is, is part of that. And so as this plate starts to get subducted, what is gravity going to do to this piece of plate that's, that's being pushed down into the earth? Gravity is going to pull on it. And so gravity is going to pull on it down this way. Um, for this bit of plate that's kind of sticking up a little bit higher because of this mid-ocean ridge, gravity is going to push down on that and try to make it go downhill. Um, and so we have these two terms that they introduce in the book called ridge push and slab pull. And so you can see those right here. Ridge push um, is just gravity pushing down on the plate and trying to make it go down. They also have slab pull. Um, and this is like the slab of earth kind of falling down inside the earth and gravity is trying to pull it down even further. And so ridge push and slab pull combined with that convection cycle that they mentioned just a little bit higher up, the convection cycle, is going to be what causes your plates to actually move. Um, and so we're kind of to the end here. Uh, this is going to require a little bit of reading, so make sure you keep this, this page open. But let's take a look at the assignment and see what kind of uh, what kind of questions they have here for us. So actually, we're going to use this one. So number one, there's only it says there's only one question, but there's actually four questions. Uh, so number one, summarize the process of C4 spreading, making sure to consider the following points. Where does C4 spreading occur? Um, identify the geologic feature and the plate boundary type. So. Where does C4 spreading occur? It occurs at the mid-ocean ridges. Um, that's, that's where your C4 spreading occurs. They mentioned that on the first page. The mid-ocean ridges is where that happens. Um, and what kind of plate boundary is it? They haven't really gotten to plate boundaries yet, but that's divergent. Um, divergent is going to be where it's spreading apart. And so divergent plate boundaries in the middle of oceans, that's going to be where your, your mid-ocean ridge actually forms. Um, 
How is C4 spreading related to the recycling of Earth's crust? Well, C4 spreading is one half of the recycling of Earth's crust. Um, for every new part that's created at the mid-ocean ridge, I have an equal amount that's destroyed at the subduction zone. Um, and if things get recycled, that's one of the reasons that we don't see any oceanic plate that's very old at all. Um, the oldest, like we saw in the reading, the oldest oceanic plate is only like a quarter of a billion years old, um, like 250 million years old. Not very old at all. It's very, very young. And so why is the oceanic plate all very young and none of it's as old as the continents? Because it's constantly getting recycled. For every area that's being created, it's being destroyed somewhere else, uh, like around the Pacific Ocean. It's being remelted down. Uh, remember we talked about the Ring of Fire last class? Uh, it's being melted down in the areas around the Ring of Fire. Uh, third little question here, how does C4 spreading drive the plate tectonics uh, through the process of ridge push? Gravity is pushing the ridge down. So any part that's, that's up high, gravity is going to want to push it down further. Um, and so that is what the C4 spreading does to help drive plate tectonics. That ridge builds up and anything that's up higher than, than something else, gravity wants to pull it down and level everything out. Um, and so gravity is going to pull on it and push it down that ridge. How does the age of oceanic crust and its distance from the mid-ocean ridge support the theory of plate tectonics? Well, we see um, the youngest crust is right at the ridge, like literally part of the mountain range that is the mid-ocean ridge. Um, the, the further away you get from that ridge, the older and older it gets. Um, and that makes sense. If I'm creating new crust in the middle, it's going to be the youngest part. And the further I get away from that younger area, um, the older and older and older my rocks are going to get. And so the ages of the oceans and the fact that they're younger in the middle and older on the outside uh, support the idea of what's happening here with plate tectonics. So question number two, describe five examples of evidence that supports the theory of plate tectonics. Well, we have the four that Wegner has, um, the shape of the continents, which the shape of the continents isn't really a great one. It Shapes don't necessarily mean that things fit together. Um, in this case, it, it, it is supported by other evidence, but maybe not the best idea. Um, so we had the shapes of the continents. We had fossils that shouldn't be on different sides of the ocean um, that are. So we have fossils that match up. Um, across ocean basins that, that should all be together. We have rock types like mountain ranges. We talked about the Appalachian Mountains uh, being essentially the same mountain range as the Scottish Highlands all the way over in Europe. Um, so mountain ranges and rock features and rock layers that are exactly the same. Uh, we have glacial features, glaciers that shouldn't be where they are today. Um, not actual glaciers, but evidence that glaciers were in places where, where they could not have formed today um, and, and evidence of glaciers across oceans, um, not actually across the ocean, but on land here and then on land over here. Well, how did this same glacier stretch all the way across? The answer is it didn't. It was these were together at some point in time. Um, the other evidence that supports plate tectonics, a fifth one would be seafloor spreading. Um, it would be the magnetic reversals that we saw, the pole reversals. Um, it would be the age of the ocean floor. The fact that there's not anything very old in the ocean, that's going to be a big deciding factor. So any of those, I gave you more than five, but uh, any five of those should work. Number three, identify the three examples of processes thought to drive the motion of plate tectonics. Explain how each process drives the motion. Um, so we have three ones here, and they're going to be on this third page. So if you go to the third page, your three parts of motion that drive plate tectonics are going to be here if it actually switches over. Here we go. So third page, the processes that drive plate tectonics, you have mantle convection, and they want to know why. Like, how does it work? Um, so mantle convection is one. Ridge push and slab pull are the other two. Ridge push, slab pull. Um, so go into this page and, and get those three and explain how they make the plates move. 
um, how that happens. That's what they want to know. Identify the three examples. I gave them to you. Explain how each process drives plate tectonic motion. Um, that's going to be the part that I need you to answer with those three. And then number four, evaluate the ability of plate tectonics to explain the ages of ocean floor and continental crust rocks. Um, why have scientists discovered, what have scientists discovered regarding the ages of different parts in the ocean's crust or in the Earth's crust? Um, and how well does the theory of plate tectonics explain this evidence? So what we have is really, really old rocks on the continent, um, which are, are billions of years old or multiple billions of years old. And then only young rocks in the ocean, um, with the youngest being right in the center at the mid-ocean ridge. Um, and so what this tells us is, A, the ocean rocks are constantly being recycled. Um, old rock is being melted away. So your oldest rocks are being pushed down underneath the surface and being melted down in the mantle. Your youngest rocks are being created at the mid-ocean ridge, and, and they're forming from this magma. They're like less than 10 million years old. Um, and your continents are the oldest. They, they are billions of years old, and they're not included in this like newly created and, and destroyed cycle. They don't get created and destroyed the same way the oceanic plates do. Um, and so why is that? How are your continental rocks staying really old and your oceanic rocks uh, being recycled all the time? It's because of the different uh, densities. Continental rocks are less dense. For every certain volume, they weigh a lot less. Um, and so they actually kind of float on the surface of all of this. Um, when when an oceanic plate gets pushed down underneath, the continent is not going to follow it and be subducted down and be remelted. Um, and so the fact that your ocean floors be created right in the middle and that's your youngest rocks uh, and that your continents are, are much, much older uh, supports the theory of plate tectonics very well. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It fits in with all the observations that we've made uh, and all the evidence that we have. So I hope you've gotten to the point where you can answer all four of these questions. Uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Send me an email uh, and I will be here to help you out. So um, that is the assignment for today. Tomorrow uh, we will take the um, we will take the little multiple choice assignment for this. Or actually, wait. Today technically will be. I don't know what is today. Let me see. Today's Wednesday, so tomorrow will be Thursday. So for Friday, um, we're not going to do a full assignment. I will just have attendance posted on Google Classroom. Uh, please make sure you go in and do that attendance so I can count you present for the half day on Friday. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, send me an email, and I will email you back. Uh, please make sure you're doing the assignments. Obviously, if you watch the end of the video, you're probably doing the assignments. But if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. And uh, I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. And I will see you when we all come back to school. Thanks. Bye.